when we are making image and observing it what we want is that image should be very sharp made at one single point then it will be very sharp and clear now when it comes to very large images of the very large objects and we are using telescope we want this thing to be very very minute but there is a problem and the first problem is there is a defect in the lens and we call that defect spherical aberration what happens in spherical aberration all these parallel rays are incident on this convex lens the rays which are close to the circumference they will meet at one point that is f now the rays which are close to the pole close to the center they will also meet at a point very close to it but not exactly same so there is distance between the two so if we assume that image is here then these rays are making it blurred if i put my screen here then these rays are making it blurred because this is the intersection point of these two now if i put my screen here then these rays are making a sharp image but these are making it blurred because after intersection they will go like this and they will make a blur here so neither this is very clear nor this is very clear that is why the image is not as sharp as it should be and for the stars and for the other things it makes a difference this is one problem that is known as spherical aberration and this happens in the lens okay are there any ways out yes there are we try to rectify it as much as possible how do we rectify it answer is if this is a lens like this large then we use only this much portion and this portion we black out now these two rays are not there and we get one sharp focus or the focus by other lines which are within this so these which we are making a different focus we have cut it down but with this we have to cut down intensity of light also so that is also damaging so we have to accommodate somewhere in between but this is the way out how it is done then we have second problem in the lenses and that is chromatic aberration okay chromatic aberration is what you have seen the action of a prism and prism disperse the white light into its component wavelengths which we call colors so in a prism we see if this is white light and here we get this this is violet this is red and these are different colors separate it now these are not all alone not all alone means what you see this upper part this part everywhere up to the center it behaves like a prism these are two surfaces inclined these are two surfaces inclined these are two surfaces inclined then these are inclined on the other side so every part acts like a prism so every part is doing dispersion of light okay let us take this part this and this this is also making certain angle now if there is a white light coming here let us say white light so on this side all these lights are distributed into different colors and which bends most that is violet so violet will bend most and we get a focus of violet here red bends less so we get a focus 
of red here. Now, if my screen is here, what I find that there is a yellow color here, then there is a red smudge around it and there is a violet smudge around it. So in this way, I get one color, other color, third color, not uniform, but just smudging, blurring. So I am surprised the star looked white and here what I see, I don't see the image of the star as a white star, what I see is a different colors, smudge is there. So this problem, I am not able to study the star correctly because if I focus yellow, then I get a blurring of violet and red both. If I focus it at violet, then there is a blur of red and yellow. This problem that seeing a white objects into different colors, color is chromas. So seeing a white wall with different colors, you won't feel it comfortable because you know it is white. So this problem with the lens that it, uh, it divide white colors into different colors that is known as chromatic aberration. So this is another defense that is chromatic aberration. I'll let, me, let me correct it. Chromatic aberration. Now, third thing, we had a problem that lenses basically made of glass. We want that uh, aperture of the telescope should be very large. This much, this much, this much, this much, 3 feet, 4 feet, 5 feet, 10 feet. But basically glass is a stone made of silicon dioxide. A large stone of 10 feet, how heavy it will be. Then we want to handle it this way, this way. If we want to handle it, it must be put in an iron frame. That iron frame will weigh double than the lens. And all this will become so heavy that you need motors and cranes to shift it. So handling become very difficult. If a scientist is seeing a star and it wants to see, he wants to see the neighboring star, he cannot move it manually. He will have to drive the motors to move it. So handling is difficult due to weight. So these are the three problems with such uh, telescopes and that is why the size is limited and the results are limited. Now to overcome these defects, we have altogether changed the type of these telescopes and we are not using glass anymore. And there is a different breed of telescopes, we call them reflective telescopes or the one which is using the principle of reflection and not the principle of refraction with the glasses and that we will see in the next lecture. Thank you.